God works through his word which carries his life and power that can affect every aspect of our lives. This message unveils truths that will help us receive and experience the supernatural power of God released in us through his word. We will also learn how to meditate on God's word, the miracle seed, so that it starts to bear fruit in our lives. Today, we are continuing in a very short uh, two-part message series uh, that we've uh, entitled God's Word, the Miracle Seed. God's Word, the Miracle Seed. We started talking about this last Sunday. Uh, we covered a, a little bit of uh, ground on this. We're going to continue on in this uh, subject, God's Word, the Miracle Seed. We are looking at the parable of of the sower, uh, as recorded for us in the Gospels. You see this in Matthew 13. Uh, You also see this in Mark 4. And you also see this in Luke, the 8th chapter, where in all of these Gospels, uh, they record the parable of the sower that Jesus uh, shared with his audience. And uh, we just want to read Mark chapter 4. And then uh, we will uh, bring out, uh, we will review some of the things we saw last Sunday, and then we'll take it forward and cover some new ground that we want to uh, address or bring to our attention. I want to read Mark chapter 4. I'm just going to read verses 13 to 20. Mark chapter 4, verses 13 to 20. So if you have your Bibles, please just turn in there. Uh, and uh, please follow along with me. Of course, the scriptures will be on the screen as well uh, if you want to follow along there. Mark chapter 4, verses 13 to 20. And he, that is Jesus, said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown, When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust, desires for other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. See, this parable of the sower... You know, many of us are accustomed to, uh, are very familiar with this because we've heard it since Sunday school days. You know, uh, I'm sure everyone who's been through kids' church or Sunday school or children's church, whatever you call it, uh, we've all gone through hearing about the parable of the sober. And most likely you ended up doing some drawings and colorings of, uh, you know, the sower showing the seed and the four kinds of soil and what happened and so on. So we are so familiar with it, sometimes we miss the truths that Jesus is bringing to us through this parable. And so what we are doing in this two-part series of of messages entitled God's Word, the Miracle Seed, is to unravel the spiritual truth that Jesus Christ wants us to receive through uh, this parable. We are bringing out seven key insights from this parable. We covered two of them last Sunday, and I just want to review uh, that for us. The first one we talked about is a fact that the seed is the word of God, or God's word is like miracle seed. You see, every scripture, every promise is like a seed. It's got the potential to produce. It's full of capacity. It's full of potential. And this is miracle seed because the word of God is bringing to us the very life and the power of God. It's not ordinary seed. In the natural, we understand it. You know, uh, many, many people are involved in gardening or farming. And, and you understand the idea of sowing seed in the ground and that seed producing something. But in this case, we're talking about the Word of God, which is a miracle seed. And in that seed is the very life and the power of God. 
Now, where is it going to produce? That seed, the word of God, has been given to you and me so that you and I can experience the supernatural life and work of God taking place in us. See, all of us want God to work in us. We say, God, work in me. God, do this for me. God, deliver me. God, heal me. God, set me free. God, prosper me. God, make me a success. Uh, God, uh, touch my family. God, touch my children. All these things we want God to do. But God is saying, this is the way I'm going to do it. Now, this is not the only way, but this is a very important way, where it is going to be by the seed of his word. That seed, the word of God, carries potential, God's potential into your life, brings God's life and power into your life and mine. But that seed has to be sown. And so that was the second insight that we, we spent time on last Sunday. To say that the seed of God's word has to be sown in our hearts. Not just in our minds. Our mind is important because it has to go through our mind. We need to understand it. But it has to get into our very inner person until we believe that word. And that is the one thing we believe. It's his word. That's when you know the word has gotten into your heart. And we talked about the process of meditation how you need to contemplate on the word, visualize the word, and confess the word. Uh, that, that, that's the process of meditation so that the word gets into our heart. So that was the second key. I want to just go over the, the other insights we see here so that we can have the word of God produce in our lives. The third important thing we see here is this, um, that the essence of what Jesus is saying is this, that once the seed is sown, the seed has to be protected and nurtured. That means you've got to continue watering it, continue cultivating it in order to produce for it, for the seed to produce. So the seed has to be protected and nurtured for it to produce. That means if I, just because I heard the word once, or just because I meditated in some of the promises once or twice, doesn't mean the job is done. No. I've got to continue watering that seed. I've got to continue pouring in water. I've got to continue nurturing that seed by continually hearing the word and meditating in that word, right? So we understand even in the natural, if you've got some seed in the ground, uh, you don't just drop the seed and walk away. No, you've got to protect it. Make sure, you know, no pests and other things come in and destroy it. And you've got to continue nurturing it. That is, you water it, make sure it gets enough sunlight. Uh, maybe you need to, you know, produce, put some fertilizer, or some manure around it and things like that. So there's a, there's a nurturing process involved in order to get that seed to produce. The seed has the potential, but the, uh, the environmental factors, if you will, uh, also are influential in determining whether that seed will produce or not. And the same is true for the seed of God's word when it is sown into our hearts. We must continue, continue to water that seed by more meditation, ongoing hearing of the word. So do not neglect the word. So like we said last Sunday, Every seed produces after its own kind. So if you want a certain kind of harvest, you want a certain kind of work of God to take place in your life, you take those scriptures and you meditate in it. You put that seed into your heart, but then you don't just do it once. You continue doing it because that way you're continuing to water and nurture that seed that is sown in your heart. Continue to nurture that seed. And you've got to protect it. And we're going to go into the details of what it means to protect. But as we break, so that's the third thing. The seed needs to be protected and nurtured if it is to produce. Number four, the fourth point. As we look at the three gospel accounts of the parable of sower, the fourth point we see here is this, that we must get an understanding of spiritual truth to keep Satan from stealing that word in Matthew's gospel, in Matthew 13, and in verse 19, Matthew records it this way, that anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away the word that was sown in their heart. You see, what is Satan after? He's after the word. Uh, that, that tells us how important the word is. What is Satan, what is Satan coming after? He's coming after the word. 
He does not want the word to be sown in our hearts because he knows if the word is sown inside us, it will produce the work of God in our lives. And so Satan is coming after the word. Now what gives permission, Satan uh, 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 the permission or the, uh, the possibility of, of t- stealing that word away when we hear it? Matthew says here, when we do not understand the word, he takes it away. So what kind of an understanding is he talking about? He's not talking about just intellectual understanding. Of course, you can read the English. You understand the language. You understand the meaning. Uh, you understand it. So what's he really talking about? He's talking about the spiritual understanding of the word, or we call it revelation. That means the eyes of your inner person understanding. You get a revelation of this, that this word is for me. This is God's truth to me. Now, when you get that kind of an understanding, when you get a spiritual understanding, a revelation of that word, Satan cannot steal that word. That word is now yours, and it will produce in your life if you'll continue to protect it and nurture it. But if all we do is, yeah, I understand the English, I understand what he is saying intellectually, and then you don't, don't let it go from an understanding, an intellectual understanding, to a spiritual understanding or a revelation where that word is that you get an understanding, a spiritual understanding of that word. If you don't go from a natural understanding to a spiritual understanding, then that word can be taken away. That word will not produce. And again, this is where many of us miss it. We hear the word. See, two people can be sitting and listening to the same sermon about healing. But one understands it intellectually, but one says, it's for me. Jesus did it for me. I receive it. It's for me. Two of us can read the same scriptures. One can read it, understand the English, maybe color it, highlight it, underline it, whatever, and they leave it at there. But another person reads it and says, God, this is for me. I believe it. It's for me. Now that person has gone from natural understanding to spiritual understanding. They spiritually receive it in their heart and they say, God, I believe this. It's for me. I'm going to live by it. I'm putting my whole life on it. That's when you know that you understood, spiritually understood the word. And that revelation now results in transformation. It results in a change because when you believe something, you'll begin to act in line with that. You'll begin to live by it. You put your whole life on it. That's when we know that you've received a spiritual revelation of that word. When you're saying, God, I believe it, and I'm living by it. So, the, the, the fourth important key is this. We must get a spiritual understanding, a revelation of that word to keep Satan from stealing that word away from us. Right? So, as you're meditating in that word, as you are contemplating, as you're visualizing, as you're confessing it, And as you're watering that word, the goal is to come to a place where your heart is gripped with that truth. You get a revelation of that word, and that word becomes yours personally. It's not something just intellectual, natural understanding. We're talking about spiritual understanding of that truth. That will keep Satan from stealing that word. The fifth truth that we see about the word of God and and what we must do to protect and uh, nurture the word in our lives is that we uh, we will face hardships in line with that word. This is in Mark. We go back to the gospel of Mark chapter 4. And it says here um, in verses 16 and 17, it says, Verse 17, tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake. So we're talking about the fifth insight. What Jesus said is this. There will be tribulation and persecution. Tribulation means difficult situations. Persecution means direct opposition. For the word's sake. So you are meditating in the word. You know it's God's life and power coming into you. And you're getting a revelation of it as you're continuing with the process of meditation. You're getting a revelation of it. It's being sown in your heart. And it's being nurtured in your spirit. 
And then, right then, he says, you are going to face some hardship that is for the word's sake. That means that is directed right at that word. So, for instance, if you're believing God to see success in your life, and you've taken those scriptures that, that, that teach you, that tell you, that promise you, that God will make you a success. You know, you take those scriptures, you're meditating in it. What happens? Sometimes you might face a setback right there. You say, but I'm meditating in the scriptures on success. But what I'm seeing is a setback, a disappointment. Well, tribulation and persecution arises for the word's sake. For that very word, you will see some hardship. That word in you will be tested. That word in you will be challenged by your circumstances, by things happening around you. Sometimes people will come and tell you, you know, things are going to get bad. They're laying off so many people. Forget about any promotion. Your even job is at risk. But here you are, you've been meditating in God's word. God blesses all the work of my hands. My promotion comes from the Lord. I am surrounded with favor as with a shield. I am like a tree planted by rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in its season. God makes my way prosperous and he gives me good success. And so you've been meditating in all these scriptures and the news you hear is exactly opposite to what you've been meditating on. But Jesus said, persecution and tribulation comes for the sake of that word. You will face something that is just contrary, that's just opposite to the very word that you've been believing that you've been sowing into your heart. What should you do? Hold on to that. Don't be like what he said are people on stony grounds. What did he, what did he say? See, these people, uh, they see initial growth. You know, the seed begins to germinate. It begins to spring up. But it can't take deep root because it's stony. So that's what he meant. That When there is persecution, hardship, they let go. They don't let the word take root, deep root in them. So, don't be like the stony ground. Where when you face hardship, you give up on the word. No. You say, I'm not giving up on the word. I am going to continue meditating. I know it's going to take time because gardening, farming takes time. It's not an instantaneous thing. But I know if this word takes root in me, it will produce in my life. This word will produce in my life. So you're meditating, for instance, the words on scriptures on healing. You're taking those promises on healing and you're meditating in it. You're expecting God to heal you. And you, maybe you go for a doctor's checkup and the doctor says, well, it's a one problem. Now I see another problem in your body. So God, what's happening? Well, listen. Don't quit on that word. When tribulation, that's hardship, persecution arises for the sake of that word that's coming right against that word of healing, don't quit on that word of healing. Let that word of healing take deep root in you because it will produce. It will produce. It's not the time to give up when you face opposition to the word of God. Jesus said there will be opposition to the word. It can come in various ways, in various forms. But the point is, the very word that you've been sowing in your spirit, the very word you've been meditating in, people will, things will come against you. Sometimes it could be well-meaning Christians who speak opposite to the promise of God. They come and tell you, no, 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 no. It cannot be like this. It can never happen like that. So they give you their opinion. You see, opinions are cheap. But when somebody's believing God for something, their life is on the line. So don't let somebody's cheap opinion rob you of that word that you're standing on. That word will produce. God yourself. God that word that's been sown in your heart. There will be opposition. There will be things coming up against that word, Jesus said. And so uh, don't give up on that word. Don't stumble. Don't be offended by what they are saying. You guard that seed of the word in your life. The sixth thing that Jesus said here about uh, protecting the seed of the word is this. He said, you know, once that word is sown in our hearts, we also have to be careful about the thorns. This is in Mark 4, verses 18 and 19. 
So what are the thorns? He said, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things. So the thorns represent these distractions. The deceitfulness, the cares of this world. So, you know, you start out very, very, uh, you know, in, in the right way. You're, you're focused on the word. You're meditating on the word. You've sown the seed of the word in your heart. Uh, you're watering that word. But then the responsibilities of the world take you away. Now you have no time for the word. No time. After you heard a sermon, you did it for two days. And then after that, you're too busy. Oh, be careful of the cares of the world. Right? We all have responsibilities, but then you got to let the priorities overrule responsibilities. And for you and me, the Word of God is priority. To me, to spend that time in the Word, to meditate in the Word, however you're going to do it, you have to do it. You meditate in the Word. Let that be priority so that it, your responsibility of, of, of what you have, the cares of this world, will not rob you of the importance of just meditating in the Word and sowing that Word and watering that seed uh, on, an ongoing measure, on, on an ongoing basis until you see the harvest. So the cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. That means I'm being distracted and being drawn away by other things. Or uh, the lust for other things, the desire for other things. So guard our heart. That we don't get distracted by responsibilities, by riches, or by desires, other desires. God, stay focused. That's why that passage in Proverbs 4, 20 to 22 is so powerful. He says, my son, pay attention to my word. Pay attention to my word. I mean, give your full attention here to my word. Incline your ear to my sayings. It means, you know, you lean over and listen to what I have to say. The world has all its opinions and all what it has to say, but you incline your ear to my sayings. Listen to what I have to say. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep, you know, let them occupy your imagination. You're not talking about your natural eyes, but your, the eyes of your imagination. Let them just fill your imagination. Let my word occupy that. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Let my word fill your heart. Then he said, my word, it'll be life and health to your whole body. Right? So God is calling our attention to it. So we got to guard the seed of the word. Keep the thorns away. Don't let the responsibilities, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things take your attention away from the word. You continue to meditate in the word. You continue to keep sowing the seed of God's word into your heart. Keep sowing the seed. Take those promises. They are miracle seed. What do you want God to do in your life? Take those seeds and keep sowing it. Keep sowing it. Keep meditating in it. Keep watering the seed in your heart. Don't let the cares of this world, don't let the thorns choke the seed of the word of God. So guard your heart from this. And the last one, number seven, when we put what we see in the three Gospels, we understand what we must do in order to see uh, the seed of the word produce in our lives. He says uh, in Matthew 13, 23, we must understand the word. In Mark 4 and verse 20, we must accept the word or receive the word. And then in Luke 8, and uh, verse 15, we must retain the word. So three things we see. In Matthew 13, 23, he says, understand the word, spiritual understanding. Receive the revelation of it. In Mark 4, verse 20, we must receive the word. And then in Luke 8, verse 15, we must retain the word. So there's a revelation of the word. You must receive the word. You must retain the word. And then he says, then the word will spring up and produce. So for the word to produce in our lives, you receive a revelation of that word in your heart. You retain that word securely in your heart. And you, sorry, you receive that word. And then you retain that word. And that word will produce in your life. Revelation of that word, receive that word, 
retain that word and the word will produce in our lives. So this parable of the sower is a secret of how God wants to work in our lives, of how God wants to release his life and power that's in his word, how he wants to release it in each one of our lives. All of us can do this. All of us can take the word of God, the miracle seed of God's word, put it into our hearts through the process of meditation, protect it, nurture it, don't give up on it just because of difficulties, protect it, don't let the cares of this world, the desire for other things, deceitfulness distract you. But you receive a revelation of it. You receive that word. You retain that word. The word will produce its fruits in our lives. The healing of promises of God will release healing. There is no sickness, no disease that can resist or withstand the life and the power of God, God's word to heal you. It can cause you to be a success. It can cause you to prosper. It can transform your home, your marriage, your family, your children. The word of God can cause that to take place in your life. But you and I must understand the seed is the word. God has given you a bag full of seeds. It's the Bible. This Bible it's full of miracle seed. What harvest do you want? Take the, take the seed. Take the miracle seed. Put it in the, sow it into your heart. Let it germinate there. Protect the seed. Nurture the seed. Let it bear fruit in your life. And you will see wonderful things take place. You are God's garden. Your life is the garden of God. His word is the seed, the miracle seed that he wants to be sown in your life. The soil is your heart. But Satan wants to take that seed off. He doesn't want the word to produce. He doesn't want the garden to be fruitful. But you and I have learned the secret. How to sow the seed into the ground through the process of meditation in the word and let that seed germinate, how to protect the seed, how to nurture the seed, how to not give up on the seed just because you face hardships, how to keep the thorns away so that the seed of the word, when you receive a revelation of it, spiritual understanding, when you receive it in your heart, you accept it inside your heart, say, God, this is for me, and when you retain it, you don't give up on it, you hold on to it even through the process of time, that word will produce. For some of us, this is the way we are going to receive our healing. As you sow the seed of God's word of healing into your heart, it will change your body. It will heal your body. For some of us, this is the way we are going to see success in our lives. Blessing in our lives as you take the promises of God for your future, put it in your heart, it will produce in your life. For some of us, this is the way we're going to see our family, our marriages, children changed and transformed by the power of the Word of God coming forth out of your life. Do what you've heard today. Take the seed of God's Word, sow it into your heart. Let it produce in your life. I want to just remind you that in our church app, which is a free app, you can download it from the app of Google Play Stores. Search for all people, search Bangalore. In the app, there's a section called Toolkit, and then there's a section called Faith Builders. If you tap on it, we have a listing of scriptures on various topics, A to Z. We've given you scriptures. You can take those seeds. Every scripture is a seed. And you sow those seeds in your heart through meditation. Sow it in.
You meditate in the word, sow it in, and nurture it. Protect it and nurture it. It will produce in your life. God's word will produce in your life. It's been designed to do that. God wants to work in you and me through his word, the miracle seed. We're going to take a few moments just to worship God. After that, we'll come back, we'll pray together. And I just want to pray and ask God for grace for us to do this, to receive an understanding of what we've heard uh, from the parable of the sower and for grace for all of us to practice this in our everyday lives. We'll be right back after this. And I'm alive, I'll walk in your counsel. And I'm alive, I'll walk in your ways. And I'm alive. I soak in your presence as you're my life, my delight. I'm alive, I walk in your counsel. I'm alive, I walk in your ways. I'm alive, I soak in your presence, you're my life. Your mind Stray away home. I'm alive. I walk in your counsel. I'm alive. I walk in your ways. I'm alive. I soak in your presence. You're my life. My delight.
Let's pray together. Thank you, worship team. We're going to now take a few moments just to pray before we close. Father, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you give each one of us a revelation of this truth about your kingdom, that your word is miracle seed, and that your word can produce in each of our lives. Every promise of God is designed to produce in our lives. Father, I pray that many will understand this message, take it to heart, will sow the seed of your word into their hearts and see great harvest, 30-fold, 60, 90, 100-fold in their lives. May each of us, O oh God, sow the seed of your word for it to bear fruit in abundance. May we be your garden that is just overflowing with fruit produced by your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As always, we want to encourage you to share this message with as many people as you can. You know, this message is very simple. God's word, the miracle seed. But there are many, many believers who do not know this truth. Who do not know that if they want to see God work in them, it's going to be through the seed of the miracle of God's word it's being sown in their lives. They don't understand the importance of this. So share this two-part message last Sunday and today. Tell them to listen to it. Because if they will act on this, they will do this, things will change. And God will work in their lives powerfully through his word. So bless them as you tell them, share this message and tell them, encourage them to listen to it. Tune, with, tune in again next Sunday as we continue worshiping God together and growing together in his word and in his spirit. Let's pray. Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our heavenly Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each of us always in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for being with us. Until next time, God bless.